My name is Trey, and my fiance Jessica and I have been on the road for the past five months traveling through states like Texas, Arizona, and more recently California. And today, we want to help all of you young couples hitting the road just like us for the first time with some practical advice we have gained so far. Also, we moved from this lovely place in Yosemite Valley and head over to the Russian River location, which is about a four hour drive. But we're gonna take it easy this weekend and split up the drive into two days. First, stopping near Wilton, California for a night and then finishing up in Russian River on Sunday. And the first tip I want to give you guys is get gas before you hook up to the RV. Get gas the day before or the morning of move day. The reason for that is whenever you hook up the RV to the truck, the choices of gas stations that you have go down exponentially. Like there's only going to be a limited amount of spots that you can actually fit into and trying to get in and finagle with an RV is stressful sometimes. So go ahead and get gas before you hit the road. So let's head back down, help just get packed up and let's get out of here. The last phases of getting packed up and I'm gonna really miss this spot. We were right by the river the entire time. I mean, couldn't ask for a better spot, but however, if you do have Starlink and you stay in site 58 down here at Yosemite Lakes, cause it's like this whole back road near the river, it only has the 50 amps. But if you do stay here, be aware of these trees with Starlink because we work from home and uh, it kind of interrupted us just a little bit. It would drop for like a second or two and then come back. But Get you guys dialed in here and i did want to say as far as internet goes we've only tried starlink this is completely random by the way but starlink has taken care of us not a promotion not an ad we're not getting paid to say this but we've been in the complete middle of nowhere and starlink has taken care of us we've had in our last spot in yosemite the only reason we had some issues with it we did have a little bit it, was, it would drop for like maybe a second or two um that was because there was a lot of trees around so you do have to be mindful where you're kind of going to set up but other than that, I mean, you're getting 250 megabytes per second in the middle of absolutely nowhere. So if you are in the market and you are about to start your RV journey, that's the way to go. Jess, you, are you ready for dinner? Yeah. Where are we going? Ramen Q. What you gonna get? The Tonkotsu Ramen. Ramen Q, out of 10? Seven. Seven? That's pretty, yeah, that's good for you. That's good for me. Yeah, that's good for you, man. <laughs> so what now? Go back home. Uh, go back home and we'll take a little fire. Good morning, good morning. It is uh, bright and early on Sunday morning and how did you sleep? Slept good? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna head to Track Supply right now because our dogs have been getting a lot of ticks on them right now. So I think there's one like, what you said, it was 15 minutes away. The supply of tractors. He gets so shy. Why are you so nervous for me? All right, Jess, let's go ahead and get packed up. We gotta get out of here. Cause we have about three hours today to go from where we're at now to our Thousand Trails location over in Russian River. And from what I heard, it is a beautiful location. So I trust other people's opinions. As we were bringing in the slides, the uh, bottom part of the uh, island here just kind of fell apart as the slides were coming in. I think one of the uh, suitcases here just kind of crushed it in, but now we have to take time and repair that real quick. Let's again. Tip number two that I would have for you guys is whenever you're getting the truck in line to hitch up the camper is use a spotter. So either Jessica's driving and I'm back here or I'm up there and Jessica's driving and getting it lined up. Um, this helps, yeah, we have backup cameras on the truck, but it also helps having a second set of eyes just get aligned and make sure you get it perfect on the right spot. And we use one of the um, ball hitches, so we don't use one of the sliders. It is a little bit better because we have that inverted like cylindrical cone that kind of helps slide it in. Um, other than that, I think Jessica is getting pretty good at being a spotter here. What do you, what do you think, Jess? She's doing all the work here. I'm just talking, so it's just kind of like, <laughs> I apologize. I am the best.
The third tip I would have for you guys is share the driving load. And what I mean by that is take turns driving. But first, fellas, if your ladies isn't accustomed or acclimated to driving a, a truck of this size, like an F-250, 2500 by Dodge or Chevy or whoever, first have to get them acclimated to driving a truck of that size first. Because if you do not, and you try to force them to drive the truck attached to the RV, it's not gonna go well. It's They're gonna be panicked and I can attest to that because I've tried it myself to get Jess to do that, but you have to get them used to driving a truck of that size first. And they'll probably tell you like, hey, let me drive the truck first and just let them do that. Let them get accustomed to it first. And then, you know, slowly break them into highway travel with the RV because when you're traveling with an RV in a city and there's small streets and there's a lot of turns to make, it can get really stressful. So my advice and how we got started and how I got Jessica to be able to drive and comfortable driving was to pull over on the side of the highway and where you only have like 100 miles of straight highway, let them drive then and let them get used to pulling something, let them get used to feeling the weight of an RV. But at the end of the day, you do want to get to a point to where you both can drive just in case, you know, I, I know this is very a dramatic situation, but like in case I break a leg down the road for whatever reason and we got to move one weekend or I sprain an ankle and or I need to sleep, or I didn't get much sleep at night. But if we gonna do what? We're just gonna stay in that one spot. What does, what does that even mean? We, we don't move until you get better. Oh, so you're just gonna stay in that one <laughs> spot until my leg gets better. <laughs> oh, but guys, take turns driving. It's gonna make the relationship, or it's gonna take a lot of stress out of the relationship, I would say, when you both can drive. And one person doesn't feel like they have to do 100% of the driving. And the fourth tip I would have for you guys is, whenever you get to a new spot like this, call each other whenever you're backing up. So typically Jess would stand in the back over here helping me back up and I would just be driving it. Um, and whenever we do that, we always call each other because I don't want to be that couple in the campground who's just always being loud and turn right. No, I said turn left. Well, you said right. I, I, I just, I try to keep the peace. Um, I try to keep it peaceful for others, keep it respectful for others. Um, and it's less strain on the relationship in general because you're not yelling at each other. You know, you don't want to do this type of things. Um, so just always give each other a call or some people even use walkie talkies. Um, and just in case you're in spots like we were in Yosemite where you don't have any signal, thank God for Starlink because if we didn't have Starlink, we would have been in a complete dead zone. Um, not like Wi-Fi is your biggest worry in the world, but you know, whenever you get to a spot, always pull out the phone or get your walkie-talkie system and be able to connect to each other. And then pro tip here, if you do have a GoPro, and this is mainly for GoPro users or even if you have any other action camera, um, I know I just bought the Hero 12, which is a great camera. Bonus thing that you can do with this is set it up on the back of your um, rig here, but you will need a suction cup adapter. Um, and I set it up on the back of the rig whenever I'm backing up places now, and I can do a, a, enable a live preview on my phone, which give me a live feed of what I'm looking at as I'm backing up. So I also have my mirrors, I have a backup camera on the truck, and I also have a backup camera on the actual RV since I didn't get the, the camera package whenever we bought the RV. So kind of like a little cheat code there, just in case you have one, or you may want to get one just for that reason. Check she got it. No, we get to pick. We get to pick one. Oh, yes. okay. That means there's limited spots. So Jess and I are in a little situation. Um, the Thousand Trails here, I guess we didn't do our research properly, but it has no dumping sites, which is a deal breaker for us. You kind of have to, if you want to, you have to get like a portable dump station or and drop it off each time, or you have to move your rig. And since we don't have that portable dump station, we would have to move our rig each and every single time, which is kind of a deal breaker just because work during the week and we don't really have a chance to just pick up and move and all that good stuff each time the, one of the gray tanks get filled up. And we, we do laundry during the week, so it's kind of a deal breaker. So now we're looking on Hip Camp to see if there's a potentially another spot in which there is, I'm sure, but it's going to come with a certain price tag. Have you ever seen that show Lover to List It? Um, we decided that we're going to love it for two weeks and we're just going to go get us a portable dump station instead of spending the extra dough on a uh, hip camp for two weeks. So we're gonna get this backed up. And the last and final tip that I have for you guys is tip number five. Try to abide by that 333 rule as much as humanly possible. And I've talked about it in previous videos, but that 333 rule is arrive no later than 3 p.m., which Jess and I are getting a little bit better at. And the second one would be don't drive more than 300 miles per day. And the last one is every three hours get out and stretch your legs and this could be applied to the previous rule where you can change drivers and about every three hours or so just get out stretch your legs and change your drivers if you want to give the other person a break so to save a lot of stress 
um, you know, if you do arrive past 3 p.m., well, nothing's gonna happen bad, but like, for instance, when Jess and I arrived at this spot in particular, one, we, did, we found out we didn't have sewage, which is a big shocker. Secondly, the electrical system here was faulty. It didn't really work, so we kind of have a jerry-rigged right now, and I'll, it's just, it's just kind of jank, so. But it works. We got a clear sky, uh, or clear view of the sky, and we have our Starlink working. It has no connection drops at all. So we're gonna stay here and love it for the two weeks. For And uh, yeah. Jess and I wanna say thank you for hanging out with us today. And we really hope that these tips can help you both out on the road in the future. Also, feel free to hang out, check out some other videos and subscribe if that's what you're into. And we will see you in the next adventure. Peace out, much love. <laughs>